according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believeth. For Moses de describeth the righteousness which is the, of the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? This is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead? But what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and thy heart, that this is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart of man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Right here we're talking about, you know, when, the, when we read the 10th chapter, we find something of the great of heart of Paul. This is Paul writing here, you know, who loved the Lord Jesus with such passion. It says right here, brother, my passion, my heart's desire. You know, we need to have passion like Paul did. You know, the preacher was talking about we need to get saved. If we have passion on souls, like that one person had passion on us, on us we got saved, you know, we could start saving people. If we'll keep saying, well, I don't want to talk to them. They're not dressed right. You know, if they not talk to them because they're like this and we're that like that. But, you know, we was like that one time before. And that person looked beyond that. They looked at the soul. And that's what we need to do as preachers. That's what we need to do as Sunday school teachers. And that's what we need to do as Christians is look at the soul. Look at the heart of the believer. Look at the heart of the person. You know, he didn't say my heart several desires. He said my heart's desire. I have one desire, says Paul. I have one consuming passion, says Paul. I have one thing I want above everything else, says Paul. One great thing I desire above everything else. I've never seen anybody like that, like the Paul of this book. So I want to, I want you to know what his heart's desire is. And we do, and we would do well to copy this man. We need to have a passion like he did. We need just to serve God. Be willing to do what God has us to do. You know, brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God. You know, whenever we have a real desire, we go to God. But, you know, sometimes you say, well, I don't know why God's not answering this prayer. Uh, this prayer. You know, what? what's your passion in it? What's your desire in it? If your desire is really in God, you know, you'd be going to him. If, you're, if your desire is to do something, you know, you'd go to God. But, you know, sometimes people don't even go to God until they're in financial help or until they're out in the despair and until they're out in this world. But, you know, you need to go to God now. You need to get right with God now. When that thing comes up in your heart, you need to get right with God. You don't need to let it keep going on because if you keep letting it, bother you so I'll get it next time I'll church next time I'll get it when the service is right you know you need to get it right now because if you're not you'll get, in the, get, get out in this world and serve him I know preachers that's gotten out of the will of God and I know people that's gotten out of the will of God and they say well why God ain't pressing me why ain't I'm going to church but yet you got something in your heart that's keeping you from God and that's what that's, that's the biggest problems with these Christians now they say well this person said this so and so so what God's going to deal with them. I ain't. Some days I want to deal with them from the way they talk. But you know, that's up to the Lord. You know, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Is what he said. You know, his heart's desire is for the salvation of souls. You know, we, he, this meeting is, he can do it again. You know, he, God can save souls again. You say, it's hard to witness the people. It's hard to get. The Lord said it wasn't easy. You know, it's going to be hard. But you know, the trials and the tribulations, that you go through, it's going to make you better in the long run. It's going to make you get better. You know, he had a purpose. In Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Psalms 126.6 says, He that goeth forth and length is bearing precious seeds shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. He had a pa passion. He had a high interest. You know, his heart was in the salvation of souls, and that's what we need to be in. He don't need to be at the attendance of the church. He don't need to be at the attendance of this and that. You know, I go to a small church, and, you know, it's so good to see them people faithful. And if you don't know, I, I, I go to a church where we are uh, missionaries to the blind. You know, that's such a blessing. And they're so good to me. You know, you know, you can just serve them. You know, a lot of times you can get by with the saints because they don't see you do it, right? I <laughs> that right the <laughs> Hey, if you make a cake, i got to stop it. You know, if you make something you don't look too good, they don't know nothing about it. They just care about the taste. And that's what Paul's words. I'm just saying. But anyways, I'm done. Just have a passion for some part of the souls.